Okay, so in this class we've skipped chapter 27 on Gauss's Law, and today I want to talk about chapter 28, uh, which is on the electric potential. So here we have city lights that are seen from space, where millions of light bulbs are busy transforming electric energy into light and also heat. So <clears throat> first I want to talk just about energy in general, kinetic and potential energy. So if you have a system of particles, the kinetic energy of the system is the sum of the kinetic energies of all the little particles in the system. The potential energy, though, uh, U, is the interaction energy of the system. And the change in U is uh, negative 1 times the work done by the interaction forces. So, for example, let's consider the system of the Earth and this ball. So what's going to happen is that there will be a the Earth will stay pretty stationary, but the ball will feel a force on it, which will accelerate it downwards. So there'll be a, a downward interaction force of gravity between the Earth and this ball, and that force of gravity does work on the ball as it moves it downwards. And so the change in potential energy of the ball as, the, as gravity does positive work, uh, the potential energy decreases. So uh, the negative, the, the, chain, the final minus the initial potential energy is negative, and it actually turns out that this ball is now sped up and has a higher kinetic energy so that the sum of kinetic plus potential energy is conserved. So we call gravity a conservative force for that reason. So, and recall, if you're uh, doing uh, computing work done by a force, if that force is constant, uh, then you look at the, direct, the uh, path that the particle goes on, which would be uh, delta r, and then the work done it depends on the angle between the path and the force. So if theta equals zero, then the force is in the same direction as the motion, and work equals force times the distance. If theta equals 90 degrees, then force is perpendicular to the displacement, and this force does zero work. If the force is in the opposite direction, then the work done as the particle uh, moves is negative force times distance. And so in general, it's force times delta r times cos theta. If you have a non-constant force and or the displacement is not along a linear path, then you have to do an integral. So if you look at this little point, for every point, every step along the way, you can define ds, a small segment of the path and you can take the dot product of that ds with the force at that point. And so the integral ends up looking like this. It's the sum of all these little uh, components of the forces in the s direction times all the delta s's. And that looks like the integral from i to f of fs ds or f dot ds. So let's again consider, first we'll con consider the gravitational field, then we'll look at the electric field. So Here's a, uh, a vertical direction is y, and here you have the ground, and you have the gravitational field pointing downwards. This is on the surface of the Earth. The gravitational field does work on the particle as it moves from high to low. So the force is down, it gains kinetic energy, and it loses its potential energy. So uh, every conservative force, not just gravity, has uh, pot potential energy associated with it. In the case of gravity, the work uh, done by gravity is the initial uh, potential energy minus the final potential energy, mgy uh, minus mgf. And so it's a positive number. And the change in gravitational potential energy as it falls is negative. So here we define gravitational potential energy as some zero point plus mg times y. Now here's an electric field. Here's a constant electric field between the plates of a parallel plate capacitor. Here's the positive plate, negative plate, electric field points from right to left. And so if you have a positive uh, charge and it's allowed to accelerate, it'll be pushed away from the positive plate, pulled towards the negative plate, and so it'll move to the left here. So if we define uh, this s coordinate as being uh, zero at the negative plate, and uh, positive at the positive plate, <clears throat> and this particle is now falling from high uh, 
uh, s to low s. s i is greater than s finally. And so the math of it looks like there's a constant force f equals q times e in the direction of the displacement. And the work done here is q e times s i minus f f, s f where this work is now a positive number. The particle is uh, speeding up. And the change in electric potential energy now we'll define as being negative of this work, same as we did with gravitational potential energy. So now we have electric potential energy as some uh, zero point plus Q times E times S. So it starts off as being zero at the negative plate of a parallel plate capacitor and then uh, grows until it's Q times E times the width of the capacitor at the positive plate. So here's this equation uh, for potential energy. You can see what will happen to this uh, test charge is that the potential energy of the positive charge decreases as it, uh, as it goes in the direction of the electric field and it will gain kinetic energy as it moves towards the negative plate. So the particle gains kinetic energy as it moves in a, naturally moves in the direction of decreasing potential energy. If it was a negative particle, then the electric f uh, force on the negative particle would actually be towards uh, the right, in the opposite direction of E. You can still use the same equation uh, because Q is now negative. So the potential energy of a negative charge decreases as S increases, and the charge will gain kinetic energy as it moves away from the negative plate. But again, here we have the particle gaining kinetic energy as it moves to a direction of decreasing potential energy for that particle. Okay, so here we have a plot of electric potential energy in a uniform field. So this might be uh, the field in between the plates of a parallel plate capacitor. So the negative plate would be over here at some s equals zero or something. Positive plate would be over here at positive s. And we are showing uh, the energy for a particle in between those two plates. And the mechanical energy is the sum of the potential u plus the kinetic. The potential here u uh, just increases uh, from u sub zero at the s equals zero and then increases linearly with s. Uh, and so what could happen is if there's a particle right here moving towards the right that has some uh, positive uh, kinetic energy and it's moving towards the right as it moves towards the right, the kinetic energy decreases. And so it's slowing down as this potential increases until the kinetic energy goes to zero. This is the particle's turning point where all of the mechanical energy is potential. And then it'll go back towards the left. Okay? And it's, it goes speeding up, speeding up as it goes towards the left. So now I want to uh, compute the potential energy of two point charges. So we'll start with two uh, like charges, Q1 and Q2, either plus plus or uh, minus minus, so that the force of Q1 on Q2 is towards the right, and it'll be decreasing as, uh, as the particle accelerates towards the right. That force will decrease in, uh, with distance. Uh, the electric field of Q1 pushes Q2 as it moves from Xi to Xf, and the work done has to be found by this integral, uh, here's kq1, q2 over x squared. That's Coulomb's law giving you the repulsive force. And you integrate uh, 1 over x squared uh, times dx. You end up with negative 1 over x. And you plug x final to x initial. You end up with negative kq1, q2 over x final plus uh, kq1, q2 over x initial. Where k, by the way, is this uh, Coulomb's constant 1 over 4 pi epsilon or not. So the change in electric potential energy of the system is negative the work done by the electric force if you set the uh, electric potential equal to some constant, which will be zero, plus k q1 q2 over x. And so uh, if you say r is the distance between two point charges, then it would be k q1 q2 over r, or using uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, for the Coulomb constant, it looks like this. This is the electric potential energy of two point charges. And keep in mind that's the energy of the system, not just the energy of Q1 or Q2, but both of them together when they're interacting electrically. Also note that we've chosen the uh, zero, uh, zero offset so that 
as r, the distance between the uh, point charges approaches infinity, this electric potential energy goes to zero, which is uh, sort of a nice uh, historical convention, nice convention. So here we have uh, two point charges. They're starting off by moving towards each other, and we've plotted this total energy, mechanical energy is positive, uh, versus the distance between them, r. And you can here plot kq1, q2 over r as being the uh, electric potential energy, which you'll see will have this shape. So if they start far away from each other, large r, and they're moving towards each other, r is decreasing, decreasing, the uh, electric potential energy will increase uh, until you get to r min, and that's where kinetic energy, which is the uh, difference between the mechanical and the potential, goes to zero. So that's where it stops, and then it'll turn around and go the other way. So the particles will get closer and closer, and then they'll uh, reach the distance of closest approach, and then they'll turn around. So if you have opposite uh, charged particles, and they're moving away from each other, these turn out to have a total mechanical energy which is negative. It's a bound system, so negative total energy. And the electric potential energy is given by kq1 times q2 over r, where q1 and q2 have opposite signs, and everything else here is positive, so this is negative, and it looks like this upside down curve of what we had before. But still, if the potential is less than the total energy, then there's a positive kinetic energy. So you can start off over here where the particles are moving away from each other. Uh, kinetic energy will get less and less, and it'll keep going, uh, slowing down until kinetic energy goes to zero at this point, R max. And then they'll turn around and start going towards each other. So R max is their maximum separation of these two particles. Okay, three quick things to finish off today's pre-class video. First of all, if we have a particle, Q2, and it's moving from uh, initial position to final position along this particular path, we've said that the work done uh, is the negative of the change of the potential energy, electric potential energy of this particle. But what if it went on a different path? Well, uh, it turns out that you can take any path and divide it up into uh, or parts of the path that go directly away from Q1 and parts of the path that go along uh, these concentric circles centered on Q1. And the electric force is a central force, meaning that along these circles there's zero work done because the, the force is always perpendicular to these circles. So all the work is done only along uh, these uh, radial lines that are connecting these circles. So you can actually take this path and it'll have the same amount of work done as if you went straight from I to F. And uh, that's going to be true for any path. So basically it doesn't matter what the path is, you can always just subtract the potential energies of uh, initial minus final and you'll get the uh, work done. So the work done by the electric force depends only on the initial and final position, not on the path followed. That's a property of a conservative force. The second thing I want to talk about, uh, if there's more than two point charges, the potential energy of the system is found like this. It's the sum for I less than J of K times QI times QJ divided by RIJ, where RIJ is the distance between uh, any two uh, particles. And the summation contains uh, this I, all the I's less than J, so that you, c you only consider each pair of charges uh, once. And then lastly today I want to consider a dipole and a uniform electric field. So here's the electric field exerting a clockwise force on this plus and a, a clockwise force on this minus. So they both exert a clockwise torque on the dipole and we uh, considered that back in chapter 26 and I'll just let you know that the work done here is the integral from this angle phi equals phi initial to phi final of uh, negative p times e times sine phi d phi. These are constants, so the integral of sine is uh, it's cosine, so uh, it's actually negative cosine, so you end up with uh, this negative canceling out, and you've got p e times cosine phi final minus cosine 
uh, phi initial. So you can figure out the electric potential as being negative p times e times cos phi. And that's the same as the dot product of the dipole moment uh, times the electric field, but negative. That's the potential energy of a dipole. And so if you make a plot of that versus phi, it looks something like this. It comes to a negative when phi equals zero. That's the uh, stable equilibrium. So that's when the dipole moment is aligned with the electric field. That's what a dipole wants to do. And uh, if you have some positive mechanical energy of a dipole causing it to turn, then it'll turn back and forth and back and forth to some maximum uh, phi angle as it oscillates. So frictionless dipole will oscillate back and forth between turning points on either side of phi equals zero, where, it's, where the dipole is aligned with the, uh, with the magnetic field, or with the electric field.